Okay. Weirdly enough, I did not know until right now that the right bumper does that. I did not know you could throw dynamite <laughs> in this game, and I've played this like a fuckload of did times. You seriously, not know. I that? seriously didn't. How did I never hit that by accident? <laughs> Man, is this like Shanghai Surprise? You know about that no. Madonna movie? It's where they have to. It's because Madonna is in it is like a nun who is like um. One second. We just fiddle with you, Mike. Fiddle. <laughs> Fiddling with my mic is a is a sin, excuse me. <laughs> but um, this was like back when Sean Penn was with Madonna, um, and it's like um, they're in Shanghai, and she wants to find an ancient ancient thing of opium, uh, to f- help the start to help the dying and the sick. Huh. But it's like there must be an easier way to find opium rather than finding a sunken treasure at the yeah. bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Seriously. <this. laughs> <laughs> you know they just grow the shit in farms, right? I, <laughs> I actually have a, a a correction to issue over something I said last week. Oh, what is that? So last week I said because we were talking about how this game uh, is the game that sank Pandemic Studios. Mm-hmm. It like it came out and then Pandemic got like whoops. So it turns I blamed uh, I blamed EA for the failure of Bioware's <laughs> Anthem. Um, which was a reasonable thing, I think we all assumed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it turns out it, it actually, for the most part, wasn't EA's fault. Really? Yeah. Uh, it was just... It was mostly uh, Bioware. BioWare senior management. Kotaku came out with an article about it, and basically they were directionless and had... they Bioware has been developing games the same terrible way for a long time. They've had this horrible uh, development strategy for years now. Um, really? Where basically they spend like four years in that's why like every bioware game they always say like it was seven years in development which it really wasn't they spend about (laughs) four years in pre-production just spitballing ideas um and then they dive into just like suicidal crunch mode apparently um and yeah and then they sort of like find in that process like the fun of the game and pull that out (laughs) <laughs> and uh, if that's why some Bioware games feel really unrefined, that's why they've accounted on they they apparently counted on this term they call Bioware magic, um, which is the the belief that yeah that they'll just like that that Bioware always seems to pull through in the end to make it work and oh, so yeah that... so they've done that so then it it turns out that this time that yeah the senior management just like came up with an even vaguer idea that they usually go with. Um, and and sort of forced everyone to go along with they apparently had a number of what they call stress casualties which is just people get a doctor's note that says they're so stressed they can't work for like a couple of months and then they lost a ton of staff they fought between departments over this whole thing but i think the kicker that like really sealed the deal for like how bad bioware fucked themselves was they would apparently get um just like really defensive um whenever somebody would bring up destiny (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah it was like it was like apparently a thing they would come out because the first thought everyone had when they first explained their concept of anthem they're like it's gonna be like a massively multiplayer always on rpg shooter set like an expansive galaxy about exploring planets and stuff and people were like so this this sounds like destiny (laughs) and bioware was apparently really keen about insisting this is not destiny don't even look at what destiny's doing (laughs) we're not trying to do that like EA was at fault for basically one thing that's like company wide. It's also partly what fucked Mass Effect Andromeda though. Mm-hmm. Um, is that they they force everyone in the company to use the Frostbite engine because oh. uh, because they because Dice developed it for Battlefield yeah. and that means that EA just like has the uh, the rights to it so they the have to pay to for it right exactly and I guess Frostbite is fucking over every EA game that isn't an FPS because yeah. it's like tailor made to do a really pretty FPS and literally nothing else. <sighs> um, so to the point that, uh, according to some of the developers in the article, it doesn't have a save system built in. Oh, so it, like, no. Yeah. That's oh, how... <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> so that's the kind of shit that Bioware suddenly, like, after four years of production without, like, a full idea and, like, management departing, suddenly they're stuck with an engine that doesn't even have a save system built. And then they're like... <sighs> I think they said they started production on, like, actual production on <laughs> Anthem. <laughs> yeah. Um, actual smart. production on Anthem in uh, 2016 Jesus. with the scheduled 2018 release date. Fuck. Yeah. And then they just thought it would work out. And then when it wasn't, Bioware like... Bioware magic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And when it tried to come out, like I, like, I can't even blame EA for this, like... EA was just like, hey, where's the game? And they're like, uh, can we have more time? And EA was just like, you said you were going to have this fucking game done. <laughs> Where is it? 
you're putting it out. Um, yeah, they lost people, a lot of people over Andromeda. I know, like, Casey Hudson, who did all the Mass Effect games, they just started Anthem and then left, like, two months into starting production. <laughs> just, like, left the company. <laughs> and then came back at the end. Um, Interesting. They just yeah. skipped out on all the hard parts. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, it, no, the last part of development is usually pretty crunchy, so. Apparently, it's it's very crunchy for, uh, for Bioware. Yeah. But uh, the base thing that the takeaway is like they can't keep doing it like yeah. that anymore fuck we're not recording have we not been recording this whole time there we go <laughs> all right so we apologize you didn't get to see any of that exciting action yeah you just missed uh <laughs> missed a whole mission there uh my fault i take responsibility it's gonna be okay <laughs> it's gonna be great you know that uh You've seen the the beginning, the making of episode one, the full uh, documentary. No, I've never actually watched the full thing. Oh, I've yeah. seen like highlights from it. It's but I've like never a, seen... it's on YouTube for free. It's like it's part of Star Wars's official channel, so they want you to watch it. <laughs> and um, there's just that part. It's like it's gonna be great. It's, it's gonna, gonna be great. great. It's gonna be it's great. Gonna be great. It's just... even funnier because that's Steven Spielberg there, who he's yeah. talking to. But Steven Steven Spielberg, oftentimes it seems in. Uh when I've seen stuff with him and George Lucas, like, it seems like he's just humoring George a lot <laughs> yeah. of the time. That I told you about the, the whole uh, nuking the fridge thing, right? What, was that George's idea? Yeah, uh, wait, I seriously didn't tell you the whole story? I think you did, but... Okay, I'm you know how he got, like, a big binder? No. Uh, for the longest time, Spielberg actually took the blame for that until George eventually was like, oh, no, that was me. You know, that was me. Steven was just protecting me. Aww. And, uh... uh <laughs> Oh, oh, George. But um, apparently what happened was uh, George brought up the idea and Steven and Spielberg was like, uh, no, George, that sounds stupid. Don't we're not doing that. And George is like, hold on. And he, and, and he comes back, I think, a week later and he has this binder that's like, like this thick. It's like giant. And he's like, this has every reason why this makes sense. And, and then Steven's like, you know what? Instead of reading that, we're putting it in the movie. <laughs> I can just imagine Steven Spielberg looking at George with this giant fucking binder full of nonsense reasons why we survive. Like, getting in a fridge for a nuclear explosion makes sense. It's just like Steven Spielberg's head like just going like, ah. Oh. <laughs> George, you spent all this time doing that? <laughs> Don't you have things to do? <laughs> Apparently Spielberg and Lucas had a bet back in the day that um, oh about close encounters yeah you? that yeah. close cars can do better so Steve Spielberg uh, I think George bet some of the profits from Star Wars yep and Spielberg has been making a lot of money yep. off it just I think he makes one percent uh, out of off of every Star Wars movie I don't know if that still applies because yeah it might not because the thing is is uh, I doubt contracts made by making a sandcastle together doesn't work. <laughs> you know about that, though, right? I didn't know about the sandcastle. They castle. did make a sandcastle to commem commemorate it because they were huh. on the beach, which is that is such a 13-year-old kid's cute thing. Yeah. I'm just picturing um, Steven Spielberg going up to Bob Iger and being like, <laughs> listen, me and George had an arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Get some letters. Oh, we got the black market. We do. Uh, gonna load up on the all of it. Yeah, and then... it's all free. Oh, I guess it's all. I guess that's. Now. I think it's just to get that from there. Yeah. So now, yeah. Um, one of the things that I love is that <laughs> the black market dealers, if you just hang around them, sometimes they'll just come up to you and go, Psst, "I'm dealing <laughs> weapons," <laughs> <laughs> which uh. I mean that I I just I that, what can you even say wrong about that? It's <laughs> like, I love it. It's so it's like it, remember it's like in the world's end where it's like we had a very complicated <laughs> yeah, way. exactly. I or, don't do that anymore. <laughs> I used to think that was super ridiculous until I've uh, I've now been to um like foreign countries where there's just like people dealing drugs and stuff on the streets a lot. Like I remember I was in Mexico <laughs> and um there would be like people dealing uh like you know, general tourist shit, sunglasses, yeah. hats, whatever. Me. And they'd be like, yeah, they'd come up and be like, would you like any of this stuff? And you're like, nah. And then immediately they'd be like, I got weed, I got coke. What do you want? <laughs> and this, was, this wasn't this was just like a few people. This was like every Everybody. single person at one of these kiosks. 
I can actually picture I guess that. I gotta go. Yeah. Guess I gotta go blow more shit up. Yeah. What? Oh, wait. Mm. I'm not the handsome fellow that just blew up that. <laughs> yeah, so. He okay, won't suspect to the game. me of anything <laughs> behind this crate. <laughs> Yeah, with this game, is um, I am noticing some of the flaws in the stealth in the sense that, like, your suspicion meter fills up a bit too fast. Yeah, you basically can't be in a suspicion zone for... <laughs> Hans! Nine! Wait, did he just say Hans nine? Uh, yeah, I think he was calling out for his buddy Hans, and then he let out, like, a good old... Of course a big, his name a big is no. Hans. Yeah, there's only, like, three German Wait, names. can't you get in your, uh, your, uh, outfit? Oh, the Nazi disguise? Yeah. I suppose I could if I felt like it. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to do my fighting. Not wearing the flag? <laughs> worth it. So worth it. <laughs> this game, uh, it is so satisfying to randomly kill Nazis that it... it, <laughs> it, it... Yeah, that... Yeah, like, as we were saying, it's like, Nazis are just great, just video game baddies. Whoops. I don't... <laughs> Whoops. Oh, boy. <laughs> I remember one time uh, talking about how c civilian casualties are unavoidable in this game. I was once putting um, explosives on a Nazi tower. Yeah. Uh, but I had just fired some shots into a crowd, as they do. Yeah. Um, and so everyone was panicking, and this woman, this, like, nun, <laughs> ran, ran and took cover by the tower, and I was just staring at her and watching the dynamite clock just stick down, <laughs> and staring at her and watching the dynamite, and then it just fucking blew her up, and she died. And, uh... Moments like that, I think, are priceless. <laughs> they stay this with you forever. priceless. It's just, uh... It'll always be in your heart. The, the picture of a poor nun just screaming <laughs> in terror. Cowering while As I you just, cower, as you just are like, yep. I might have even been moving so little that the idle animation was going on. <laughs> <laughs> just lighting the Smoking. cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking nun just breathes her last in terror. <laughs> yeah, I did that. <laughs> oh, love. Oh, you're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> I'm the friend to the French people. <laughs> so blow up the nuns. <laughs> now, man, that really is like Hitman Absolution. Yeah, fucking, um... God, I remember when that trailer hit and people were like, what the yeah, fuck Yeah, with the, the leather-clad nuns. That yeah. was a choice. <laughs> it was a creative decision that they made. Yeah. I've never actually been able to get too much in the Hitman games actually like i've been able to like kind of do it but i've never played any of them really? i've just yeah i've seen other people play them so like i, I know the deal but i've never uh played them myself the, the problem with hitman and i know you ever heard of game maker's toolkit game maker's toolkit i have not heard of it's like a it's basically just kind of like it, well okay it's better than the nerd writer but it's kind of like the nerd writer of video game design gotcha but you know he's he's better than you know the nerd writer i'd say or anything like that but uh, he has these things like I remember he was at one point he was talking about Hitman it's like the game the game makes you earn the feeling of an assassin by making you repeat the missions all the time and I'm like isn't that just fucking terrible game design <laughs> yeah isn't that just tedium <laughs> yeah I mean but hey if it, if it worked for him I mean yeah if it improved his experience we are taking a break from missions to show off just the uh, the open world here for a bit oh yeah yeah take a look at Different art styles. Ah, the, the vehicles don't handle great. <laughs> Some of this is that I'm not the best driver, but... That was a wise civilian <laughs> to get out of the way there. These civilians are kind of hard to get out of the road. They, they don't really get out of your way. They just kind of stand there and wait for you to just go away. They are, um... They're very French, you know, they, they, <laughs> you are the one doing wrong. Why should they change for you? Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> it's just the punchy. It's just like fucking cold cocked. Him. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those things where you notice that in certain video games, when you have a stealth takedown and you realize that this stealth takedown is not in any way stealthy whatsoever. 
Damn it. That was not my intention. <laughs> All right. I guess so I'm assuming we blow to... these. These are. This isn't. Oh, we could use it? Fuck yeah. And you can use it to actually take out. Oh. Oh, is that one too far away? These are AA shells, so they don't have infinite range. That's a lot of good uh, world design, honestly. Yeah, but you can see there's other stuff we can take out, like Wait, blimps. Wait, really? Let's see. Is it going to. Yeah. Oh, Check that out. Sick. Yeah, right? That's Look fucking at that awesome. Shit. I know, right? Look at this. Why don't more games do this? <laughs> fucking. I mean, I'm now at alarm too. I'm probably not going to survive this, but look at that! That's awesome! Look at it light up orange against the black sky there, like fucking A. <laughs> that, that is so cool. Yeah, it's like, right, that's that one of the things I like, like I about can't this hit game, the tower honestly, is, is, like, I, I mentioned this, as, like, I think I was telling you about Resident Evil 2 and how it does a lot of great things with, like, multiple things, like how, you know, you use the knife or you can use the yeah. flashbangs and give me that. Resident Evil 4 was really good. That's always been, like, one of the things about Resident Evil games is having different ways to take to deal with situations. Yeah. You can actually say the same thing about Metal Gear Solid in certain ways, but it's far more clunky. Yeah. I think it varies, too, from Metal Gear game to Metal Gear game. Yeah. Um, same with Resident Evil, obviously. Like, both those franchises fluctuate in quality so violently. <laughs> How many Metal Gear games have you actually played? I've played one, I've played three, I've played four, I've played Peace Walker. You um, didn't play any of five, right? No, I've never played any of five. I do which have that one. Five looks like the one that, that brought the fun back into it, because four, the problem <laughs> with it was so damn serious. It yeah. wasn't fun at all. Like, it didn't have shit, like, because it's same, like, both games, both that and Metal Gear, or um, Resident Evil, sorry, have similar appeal in, like, the camp quality, too. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, let's just start throwing dynamite now that I know Fuck that I yeah, can do kill that. Fuck yeah, kill as many Nazis as you can before you go down! But yeah, no. Oh, wait, uh, I don't want to sabotage that there. One thing I... Yeah, this game... I do appreciate a game that knows when you're making a big action adventure like this. It's kind of... You shouldn't be taking it too soon. <laughs> Look where that guy... Oh! Ooh. Yeah, all of his skin and bones are still intact. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you know, doing more than that. <laughs> that would that would stretch the budget of a studio that. What the fuck? Why is? Oh, God, I guess I'll just put it down here. I hope that blows oh, the tower up. Don't know why it wasn't putting it on the tower itself, but Sean is too can't. drunk to do that. <laughs> <laughs> His hands are shaking. He's trying to do. <laughs> oh Moira, oh I better not eat that uh, much. And... Oh shit. Uh... I think I'm up now. So we've run out of weapons. I think we should come back at what the bell. Yeah, we're at the bell, didn't we? Bell, didn't we? Okay. You gotta go through that door. Yeah, uh, I was just. <laughs> oh, thank God I didn't accidentally turn on the boobies. That would have been <laughs> that would have been a fucking nightmare to censor. Censor right that, there. yeah. I told you you were gonna have to, cause it's just. Uh, I th this is why we're friends. You are smart. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> you are smart. Ah. Most, mostly our, our friendship stems down to me and being self-depreciating. And then you're like, shut up. Stop it. No. I need to get a spritzer. A <laughs> spritzer of water. To oh, wait, stop uh, you. We have to talk to them again, right? Huh? Oh, you can go. You got now. See those on your mini-map? Each of those um, yeah. yellow things are missions you can do. Yeah. So Vittore is in there. You can get a mission oh, from him. Okay. I think the Vittore mission will get you access to the um, garage. Oh, let's Which will let you just one, get your guys, yeah. Do I have to go back inside? Yeah, yeah, Vittorio's oh, okay. in there. In which case, I'll just go back in. It seems fate had other plans. How did you get... I'm a good director, see, I'm spinning the camera. Yeah. That's always what I ended up doing in these um, cutscenes. Because they're always just two people standing yeah. right close to each other. There was a really good trick about Ark of Asylum, because when they didn't have the budget to avoid any loading screens for, like, early on in the game, there'd be these sequ You know Oracle, right? That's Barbara Gordon. When she got crippled, she yeah. became Oracle. Yeah. You'd have conversations with her, and you'd slow down, and that's when they'd actually load the game because you were moving ah. slower. So it kept them from having to, like, you know, do do stuff the screen. Like that. Yeah. Oh, that's clever. It is really like that's that's partly why I'm like Rocksteady are actually really good developers, which is why I want them to make another fucking game that's not Batman. Yeah. I was really worried when they when they were saying uh, the rumors about a new Batman game. Like, it's done. It's over. We don't need another one. Make another game. Yeah. Um, now, to be fair, I don't know what they will make, but you know, it, I, I feel oh, like you got to get out of your car. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna parallel park. <laughs> like a good like a good Irishman. I'm not drunk. <laughs> Monsieur, you fall to your 
Until death. <laughs> How do I run again? I don't want to throw a grenade. Oh, don't, don't, uh, you gotta tail him. Oh, and you know, see. Oh, right, I have to tail him. Ugh, gonna... what a dick! Jesus! Jesus, fuck it, you see, oh, God, the Nazis are such... Also, that is, like, that kind of behavior is what Nazis act like in real life, too. Yeah. Like, fucking, I remember, um, reading an article, Richard Spencer fucking it, like i guess his wife is filing divorce because big surprise the nazi's a domestic abuser who yeah, would have thought who fucking thought who would have thought that a fucking white supremacist wasn't a stand-up guy but um he unfortunately <laughs> stand-up guy yeah i also love he how has a it's kid. not a suspicion meter it's a paranoia meter yeah <laughs> your, your question like how how paranoid is that guy because you know nazis they're overconfident they're all overcompensating this guy is people. not paying his sex worker which is <laughs> just pay them yeah she fucked a nazi do you know what that does to you i don't do you i don't no. <laughs> <You're> good. <laughs> i may have slept with a racist before but never a nazi <laughs> <laughs> well thank goodness <laughs> I mean, it's America. There's a lot of racists. There are a lot of racists in America. <laughs> Doesn't excuse it. Don't be racist. Oh, well, I, I figured that was what you were saying. <laughs> I'm covering my ass here. <laughs> Just, uh... That fucking sprint cycle. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's so fast, too. It's faster than some trucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so kill the tree. Uh, you can either... I'm gonna wait. Yeah. What? No, no, you, you promised me protection. You promised me protection. You're nothing. That's a lie. They'll kill me. I'm gonna kill them both. That's a good idea. We don't need another... Race. Oh, wait, but you need a stealth gun, because did you, you didn't buy a gun. Oh, I You were unarmed here, yeah. Yeah, when I died, you lost all your weapons. Sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and... Hang on. Yeah, yeah, get him too. Hey, fucking... you know what? Oh, you better not despawn this fucking Nazi. Oh, it's not gonna. Good. Yeah, don't fucking get him. Get him. Good. You fucking, fucking fuck piece you. Piece of shit. Pay your sex workers. Serious. They are. They are lovely women. They are. And this was not a lovely man. <laughs> and now we're taking his shit. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. How do I put away the disguise again? Uh, back end with the, uh, what it says down there, see? Oh, okay. I thought that was, like, remove it in total. Oh, you can't, yeah, once you remove it, it's gone. Oh, you, you can't, you can't put those back on. You gotta get a new one if you take it off. Oh, okay. Yeah, I It was never... worth wearing his clothes just, just to leave him there completely naked, so. <laughs> it's like, you don't deserve any fucking clothes. No, he doesn't. Damn Nazi. Fucking Nazi. But, uh um, Nazis. Yeah, actually, this is worth it. I never, uh... I almost never do the the steel disguise thing for the same reason whenever I play uh like Day of Defeat I never or any any kind of World War 2 like multiplayer shooter yeah I don't play as the Nazis yeah I think that makes you a bad player but like fuck y'all who love playing as the Nazis <laughs> cuz I've now played enough online games to know that a lot of those people who play as Nazis are, are Nazis. Nazis yeah they're Nazis and uh, I have no shame in not wanting to dress like a Nazi. <laughs> That's not something I feel bad about. Yeah, no. So I never wear the Nazi uniforms because I don't want to... In my Be a fan fucking Nazi. In, yeah, in my wish fulfillment fantasy of being a, a saboteur, it, no, none of it involves me wearing a Nazi uniform. <laughs> there is no... There's the, yeah. So once you buy something, you could just pick it up for free? Uh, um, no. Oh, so these are just free for the moment? I think so. Oh wait, maybe it ex no, maybe think... it's been a while. I forget how it goes. I think I think you're right. Actually, you can just pick it up for free. But ammo always costs oh, money. Oh yeah. That, otherwise, you'd be broken. Yeah. No, I, I was going in my <laughs> dude, head off of him. Dude, look, it's a fucking four leaf clover. The wait, top where's the? Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's fucking, so of awesome. Course. Ooh, free. Hmm. I think maybe it's because we have the full DLC or something like that. But I oh, know. I think it also is necessary for um because I think. <clears throat> But one thing I was going to say about Arkham, just what I like about the fact that you're given control of the camera is to give the player some kind of control over this if you have to do this. Yeah. And one funny thing about Arkham uh, Arkham Knight, it's the worst game in the series, but it's still it's still pretty fun. It also is like one of the best looking games I've ever seen in my life. It's 
weird because you go from Arkham City where everything looks a little bit stylized and all that stuff. Yeah. So the ultra realistic, super realistic looking huh. Joker, and you're like, what? But it's the but it's Mark Hamill too. So you're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. But it works really well. Hmm. But um, good game. It was introducing that. Hey, it's it's morning already. Yeah. Wow. There's there's day and night in this game too. What? Day and night get day and night hasn't. You know, something I do miss about games with day and night cycles is nothing really changes at night, or at least noticeably, I would say. You yeah. know that? You, or am I just talking out of my butt? No, I think that like they could change the thing, but it doesn't feel like the city has changed. Like Everyone's still just walking around like the way they yeah. would. There's not like other signs there. Yeah. It's just the lighting is different. Yeah. All that tapping. <laughs> Yeah, this game, they'll be, you tap a lot more than you end up using it. The climbing is, it, it can be frustrating. Wait. Okay, yeah, okay. I just want to make sure I didn't have to keep tapping it uh, to hold on, so I can still hold yeah. on, so I don't need to, like, tap, tap, tap. Yeah. Sean's fingers do not get tired. They do not. Man, just, just imagine how fucking ripped those fingers must be. They, like, have their own biceps and I everything. also wonder how calloused his hands must be from sliding down those telephone lines. Hey! Wow, I you got spotted Wow, I got fast. spotted fast. Get... Oh, shit. Oh, no! Wait! Sprint animation, don't fail me now. Oh, no. Uh, oh, maybe wow. I'll just restart the mission. <laughs> I wonder if this game hadn't come out because Assassin's Creed, uh, the series has jumped to many, many different points in history. <laughs> I feel like this this point in time would have been Ideal. a really logical place for them to take it. And That's that, a good point. That this game, and I guess it was so logical that this game just jumped right in on that shit, yeah. <laughs> snatched it up, yeah. <laughs> made it so they can't ever do it. <laughs> but I'd be I'd be curious to see. I mean, Ubisoft actually take a swing at it. I mean, just make the Crusaders Nazis. The yeah, the plots of those games got kind of stupid and divorced from history very quickly. Pretty much. Not that they weren't like, not that they were super accurate to like the real Hashashin, um, in the first game, but uh, yeah, like at least in the first game, it was set in the Holy Land during yeah. the Crusades. There were besides an anomalous American accent off of the main character, it was pretty. Good. Yeah, and I I think I remembered hearing that. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Fucking spring. Um, <laughs> I remember hearing that I think he originally had an accent um, when they first, like the first voice actor did an accent and then they decided to change it for reasons unknown. But I might be wrong about that. Uh, Maybe they are probably going to go like, well, it's the Animus and it is an American person who Yeah, you're... but it's a different I voice. I know. So like, it's like, doesn't... it would have made more sense just to have Nolan North do a stereotypical accent. Uh, at least would have been more uh, excusable but oh man you're just funny i once saw an interview with noah north where they were um <laughs> where uh they were they were like asking him to do voices of different people he played in games and yeah. he played i forget i think it was one of the saints row games but they yeah. didn't play like a like a stereotypical like latin american gangster he was the main character too was he i think but, at least for the third one huh. or no the fourth one i think but they had uh they like asked him to do that one and he didn't remember doing the voice and i could just see a look at his eyes that immediately said Oh fuck! Did they make me do a Mexican accent for one of these roles? <laughs> Ugh, and there was just so much discomfort in his voice and face <laughs> trying to do this oh. accent. Well, that was easy. You're now at alarm too. I'd suggest just driving out the city as far as you can. Yeah, if you can even get out of the city at this point. Yes, I can. Oh yeah, there way that way. Man, tried to bring it back in one piece. Can't do it. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. You might have to fix the t Maybe you'll have to fix the bumper, I suppose. Just a little... Just give it a little spit shine. <laughs> <laughs> just spit on it. Yeah. Wipe it would be a like little a, hanky. Like in Space Jam or something like that. Yeah. God, I can't believe I still remember parts of that movie. Uh, I don't know if I've ever watched Space Jam all the way through. I actually don't know if I have either. I've seen parts of it. I know as a kid I watched Looney Tunes back in action like me a too. couple of times. I did. I liked that it. That was a lot. how I found out what the Mona Lisa was. Really? Yes. <laughs> so, that would That was a good sequence in that movie actually. I don't remember it very well. It's when uh, they're chasing through the paintings and they go through different paintings. Mm. 
I remember when they went paintings. to Area 51. And oh, um, yeah. I didn't know this until I had seen Doctor Who later, but there is actually a Dalek in the background of that scene. Really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's cute. Yeah. There was a um, fun fact during the Pete Davidson era of uh, even... Doctor Who. They could only Which get... Which Doctor uh, was he? He was uh, the, the blonde one in the cricket outfit. Oh, okay. Um. Uh, they only had, I think, like one episode with Daleks in it because the creator of the Daleks was like holding on to the rights and being stingy with them because he wanted to make like, like Dalek only TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you told me about this. And I would just love to watch a Dalek sitcom. <laughs> me too. It's yeah. yeah. I I've, to I've Dalek seriously... versions of all British sitcoms, like the Dalek version of the Young Ones, <laughs> the Dalek version of Space, the Dalek version of Black Books, the Dalek version of Blackadder. <laughs> <laughs> This is incompatible. You see, uh, you see, you see, Dalek Blackadder in World War One trying not to get exterminated. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Dalek Nazis, man. They're all scared to go over the top because they can't climb ladders. <laughs> yes, that's how they lose the war. That Are they a... actually afraid to climb ladders? No, it was a common show. joke. It was always like said, I think, by like characters of dialogue in the classic series that the Daleks could fly. But, or like that they could go upstairs, but you never saw it because they didn't have a way. The budget, yeah, yeah of showing it. Um, and there, there is actually an episode. It was actually one of those Pete Davidson ones where we do see Daleks can be killed quite definitively by pushing them out a window. <laughs> it's a bit the Doctor and a couple of soldiers just grab one and just <laughs> push it, push it through a warehouse out the window, <laughs> and it just falls and smashes. Amazing. Yeah. Never really could get into the new show. Is the old show good, though? Like, uh, it's cheesy fun? There's good serials from the old show that I would strongly recommend. I would recommend City of Death uh, very heavily. I think the um, the Key to Time series uh, has a couple of good episodes. Um, any of the ones with doc- the, the fourth Doctor and Romana. The one with the scarf, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Romana was a... Was a, a definitely one of my favorite companions i think they tried to get um like some of her character's attitude with some of the new companions but not quite effectively i've been yeah. in i've been in many many arguments uh over the entire matt smith stephen <laughs> moffat run of the show with many people a lot so, of people like that era don't they a lot of people hold matt smith very dear and they're allowed to be wrong it's america <laughs> <the> first amendment <laughs> He seems like a nice guy. Yeah. He doesn't seem like a bad actor or anything either. He's a fine actor. Um, I've seen parts of The Crown. He was fine in that. Yeah. You know, it's just... I haven't seen him in anything else. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Matt Smith didn't do it for me. Mm-hmm. I just remember I saw... I did see that one where David Tennant came back like with Matt Smith. And they had a whole thing where it literally felt like they were comparing dicks with the uh, sonic screwdriver. Yeah. That and was, I was a like, cheesy joke. Wow. Were... See, this is a thing that I, I fucking... It's going to sound weird, but I think a big part of what made the first four series of the new Who work was uh, that Russell T. Davies is gay. Because with that, uh, bear with me here, <laughs> means that the man had a very thorough, inside-and-out knowledge, understanding, and appreciation for camp. Yeah. Um, and that's why there's like so much stuff during that series that just turned the camp dial all the way up. Yeah. Like the giant spider queen. There's no logical reason for her to actually hiss while she's talking. <laughs> but fuck it. Why not? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a... Uh, there's a great, great love uh, and that. And there's like that campy sort of like fun free attitude is like a thing that carries through. And then Stephen Moffat took over and Everything fucking we got, a, we got a straight person in there. And what's every story about is like marriage and children and shit. Like I don't give a <laughs> fuck whether the companions are getting married or not. They're the side people who are there to just be the audience during a cool sci-fi adventure. Yeah. Fucking who gives a shit? <laughs> At least we got Gillian Jake. No, not Gillian Jacobs. Uh, Karen Gillian. Karen Gillian. Yeah, she's good in stuff that isn't Doctor Who. Her yeah, character she... in Doctor Who is a fucking asshole. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah, she's really good in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Hmm. God, I love the second movie so much. I know you don't really care for it, but I do. I need to give it a second chance. You I see watched... the Lindsay Ellis one. I'm assuming. Yeah, I saw the Lindsay Ellis video, which um. Actually, all the stuff that, that she said that she liked about it, like the emotional depth that brought up, 
um, was what I think, like, sort of, I was in on, because I think I just, like, it had been a while since I watched Guardians, and I wasn't that invested in the characters. Fair. And, um, you know, watching watching a bunch of Happy Meal toys uh, <laughs> angst over their issues with their godparents. <laughs> Um, but no, I'm sure I'd actually like it if I gave it another chance. I saw that. I didn't see the essay beforehand, but I saw it and I was, I was almost crying at the end of the movie. So that I saw that I was like, that's pretty much in words what I feel about the movie. So I, I can't really. Yeah. I mean, maybe, else. maybe it's quick. I was also like, I was in a bad mood when I watched the movie <laughs> and I was also, I was on acid, but not enough. Uh, I was on, yeah. I don't know, you don't do drugs. For, <laughs> I don't the, do drugs, if but. If the listeners who might understand the blue bald sensation of being <laughs> on only one tab of acid, uh, that's sort of where I was. <laughs> it was like, not enough. And so what was happening is just like time was going really slowly. And the movie was already like, it's like two hours long, two hours, 10 minutes. It was a longer. Yeah, it's about for a two Marvel hours. Movie. Yeah. And so it Actually, was. Just... No, they're all like two hours. Yeah. That's weird when you think about it. Yeah. But those two hours were taking way longer. And I was not having it. I was just sort of wilding away the time. I'm sure if I gave it another shot, I might actually really In like which case, it. don't see Endgame. That shit's going to be three hours long. Yeah, well, I didn't see... I've, I've, you didn't see Infinity War. Have though, I right? done my whole rant to you about um, every big finale plot being the same? It uh, actually ties in with Doctor Who. Ooh, tell me. Okay. Uh, and The Dark Knight Rises. So actually, so <laughs> this was a thing that started when The Dark Knight Rises came out because that movie came out and I went and saw it and I was I was just fucking mad. I was <laughs> mad from like the minute from the minute that football field exploded <laughs> from, the, from the minute that scene happened until like about a month later. I was just <laughs> pissed off. Um, and uh, one of the things that bothered me is that I noticed um, there's like a specific finale plot that I've seen done. So many times. It's the plot of The Dark Knight Rises. It's the plot of the season three finale episodes of Community. It's the plot of the season three finale of uh, Doctor Who. It's the plot of the season three opening of Battlestar. What is it with three? <laughs> During this plot, <laughs> opening of Battlestar Galactica. It's the kind of shit that uh, Infinity War was doing. And it's the, basically the, the plot goes like this. Um... The bad guy, there's like first a bit of build up. The bad guy is now hyped up as like a bigger threat than ever before. And then there's, uh, I think you're just going to have to shoot your way out of this yep. one. But as you're saying. But yeah, okay. So then, but the big thing, I think like the key to this is that there's always, the bad guy shows up, takes, so, oh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. <laughs> uh, bad guy shows up, takes over the setting where the story usually takes place. Uh, this is Chang and Community, it's Bane, um, in Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. Rises, it's Voldemort and thing. This is supposed to like say to the audience, like, look how low everything is. Usually you'll see at least one major character die, probably a couple, and then the main character is somehow exiled from the setting for a while. Uh, in Harry Potter, it's like they're off fucking off doing the core cruxes <laughs> community. They go and they like get psychological therapy. The Dark Knight the Rises. Uh, the Dark Knight Rises, we just see him, like, do some crunches for a while. <laughs> fix his broken back. <laughs> yeah, just fix a broken back. Like, that's not, like, what fucking keeps people in wheelchairs <laughs> for the rest of their life. Jesus Christ, that movie is so goddamn dumb. It is. Um, and then, yeah, and then they always, like, do soul searching at Doctor Who. It's like, yeah, we see all the characters in prison. Then, usually, what happens for the third act is there's some kind of ticking clock, be it a bomb in the case of The Dark Knight Rises, a bomb in the case of Community, a bomb in the case of something else. There's just a lot of... It's usually a bomb. It's almost always almost a bomb. Almost always a bomb that will blow everything up. And then we see the hero, you know, show up at the last minute, deliver a big speech, and then beat the bad guy. And basically they do this plot because it is the way to ratchet up the most possible drama you can have. Um, oh, you gotta... I think you gotta free them in order, so... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. It's like the most possible drama you can have. Like uh, It's like a whole thing of like, look, let's see how bad everything can get. And then they save the day. But what results is a, bo a story that's just really boring and sad to watch <laughs> or, or engage with. Because it's basically people losing for the first half of any movie. People sitting in a cell or doing nothing for the rest of it. And then just saving the day in one fell swoop at the end. And it... It's fucking boring. <laughs> and after seeing it so many goddamn times, I'm just so frustrated with it. And so, like, <laughs> Infinity War. How'd that go? First one, oh, the bad guy is ratcheted up as a huge thing, takes over the setting, 
kills a bunch of main characters, I'm going to get like Wait, a... which one? Infinity War. Oh, Infinity War? Um, Fucking... That's, it's kind of like that, but it, I would say it's different enough, I'd say. Yeah. It's, there's no like, well, there is kind of a take, there's no like, well, there is kind of a taking over, but it's more of like just invasion rather than, you know, they take over the city and all that stuff. Yeah. And plus there's a lot more than just one hero as well. So, you know, uh, you might, uh, the way it ends, you might find interesting, but you probably already know that how it ends, right? Uh, with the snap. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's like that big low point they do. And then I'm sure everything is going to be absolutely fine (laughs) well yeah that's the (laughs) thing is uh it's split into two you know movies the thing is though is i actually read reread the the comic version of the infinity gauntlet uh after i watched the movie and god it is bad it is fucking (laughs) awful that cop that comic series is fucking atrocious uh it's really bad (sighs) and you know what? I made me actually like Infinity War more. They're all just being like, you killed half of the universe. I killed half the universe. You killed half the universe. The <laughs> Celestials come. You killed half the universe. We're going to stop you, Thanos. It doesn't stop. It just keeps going. I've always been of the mind that the Marvel comics are kind of, a lot of them are kind of shit, except for Spider-Man. And uh, some X-Men You're ones. not wrong. <laughs> um, whereas their movies are actually, honestly, a lot of them. I, I, I enjoy a good portion of them i know there's like there are problems with them but you know, oh yeah he's on the other side of that fence yeah, yeah. i think you can climb the building and hop over the fence i'm i'm gonna fucking do that then but yeah it's 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 that kind of thing where uh on the other and dc actually has a lot of good comics but their movies are almost all shit yeah <laughs> at least at least definitely nowadays and the dark knight rises is a piece of shit <laughs> the dark knight rises is such a piece of shit i <sighs> i'm I'm just like, whenever people say that movie is good, I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? That movie is so bad. That <sighs> Man, we have That's not what... been talking about this game because it's just genuinely enjoyable. But yeah. As you were saying about the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to talk more shit about it. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> There's Everything has been said. It's bad. <gasps> That we'd land on his balls? Who the fuck is this person just casually Sunday driving by the Resistance headquarters? Let's find out. <coughs> Come back here, sir. I need to card you. You know what? Always, I think this also happens in some of the Grand Theft Auto games, but um, <laughs> if you just rip them out of their cars and then don't take their cars, they don't take their cars back. <laughs> <laughs> that did, that like, does happen in GTA Five, though, I will say. Do they take their cars back? If you yeah, they'll actually like run after you um, unless they're unless you drive off really fast. A lot of them will actually run after you and try to take their car back. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I do like GTA. I, I want to make a comparison at one point. Actually, uh, talking about games again, is you know there's that torture scene in The Last of Us that they have, and everybody's like, "Oh fuck yeah, that's so cool." He's uh, such a when he like I pops don't... his knee off or whatever. During the winter section. I vaguely remember that, but yeah, it was just not... Everything in that game was generic. There was nothing in there that I hadn't seen in something else. So, yeah. I like the, yeah, it was just another 24-style torture scene. Like, you know how many times I've seen a burly man with a beard torture a motherfucker <laughs> throughout the 2000s? It was a lot. It's been oh, a, lot a lot of fucking times, okay? So, like... <sighs> yeah, but uh, what was interesting is... Did you play GTA Five? No. Well, they have, you know, the famous, the infamous torture scene that's in there, right? Yeah, I know about it. What was great about it is essentially it basically felt like almost like the Last of Us levels of torture, though a lot, it goes way beyond that. And it just, because at first I get the feeling what they were expecting is that people were going to be like, yeah, this is badass. And then it just keeps going and you keep doing horrible things. And it just gets everyone to squirm whenever they're playing that. I'm like, that's good because you shouldn't be cheering for when this happens. Yeah. I give a lot of credit to Rockstar in certain regards, even though I would never want to work there. <laughs> I don't want to spend a full week animating horses shitting in the woods. So yeah, I always wonder what the like what the environment must be like at Rockstar because they never uh... indulgent is what it is. Sitting Barry. on a crowd, just wadding through money to get to your desks, <laughs> basically. <laughs> well, that sounds kind of fun. Yeah, I always picture the Rockstar offices looking a bit like the Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Just a bit of money debauchery and just 
misogyny. Just yeah. <laughs> virulent misogyny yeah. all over the place, all over the walls. I have to pick it up. So we'll need a car. Need a car. We'll need a car. I want the ax I want the fucking accent technique guy to do this game. <laughs> to do this and just game. see him go on a <laughs> ball. Even though it's like, listen, you're supposed to be having fun. Listen. Yeah, those videos are all nice. Yeah, I like that dude. That dude who looks like Glenn Howard. <laughs> he really does look he like He looks Glenn so Howard. much like him. Yeah, he could probably be a stunt double. Probably. What if he was his dialect coach for something and they're <laughs> just standing there? It's like, which one's the real <laughs> one? Which one's you Dennis? You have to shoot the real one. <laughs> you see, they like try it like, De- like Glenn Howard. And he's like, I'm the real one. And the, the other guy does uh, just a, a perfect impression of Glenn Howard's voice. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. like, no, it's me. Luke is not driven by hate. Because he loves this country. <laughs> yep. Every line is amazing. I, lo- I like the music, the background music. Yeah, I've heard some people claim that it's um generic or something. No, I've heard some people claim that it's music from the actual forties, which none of it is. I'm um, yeah. One, but one of the, if like it can the, fool people, then hey. The the theme to this game is that Michael Bublé song. Um, I'm feeling good, or you know how I feel, or however that goes. Yeah, this game's very cheeky and fun, and I like it a lot. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. Well, that's the thing. Is like, um, I miss games like this. Uh, games that do try to have that, they all try to have that Tarantino-style fun that I don't like. Well, it's the problem with all the Far Cry games is after 3 is basically everyone just turned into Vaz. Whereas, you know, the appeal of Vaz is there was only one Vaz, but now I'm starting to realize that a lot of people are sounding like Vaz in games. Mm. And it's the whole Tarantino thing of thinking that these characters are all so cool that they're going to, if they're guys, they're going to pull out their eight foot dicks and brag about them and then think they're the coolest people in the room. Yeah. And it's like, ugh. there's none of this like, hey, we're fighting for a cause. We're having, f- we're, we're trying to do right. And just being generally not dickish. Yeah. Outside of running over people's cars. <laughs> it's that sincere honesty from the characters that I like. That they're all, like, genuinely, like, they're taking this seriously, but you know you're not supposed to take it too seriously. Yeah. And uh, I think I think, I think the story of this game mostly works, sort of. It's, it's it functional. Gets, yeah, basically. It works. That's what it, and that's what it needs to be. Man, that was worse than usual. Yashar, this is it. Yashar, this is it. It's that was better it's a, yeah, than no, what he did. That, that's what the problem was. Uh, my Irish accent is actually somewhat slightly better than his. <laughs> Not that much, but the lucky one, yeah. Go right in. You are too kind. You are too kind. God, look at this. This is still really good looking. I like also yeah. how the sky is blue too. Yeah, well, you see the sky is blue over, over the there. Up there. Yeah, and but, over here. You know, there's but there's that like contrast that I really like. Yeah. The um the only problem is I do like that the this like freed the liberated areas are um like super colorful. <laughs> oh, holy shit! <laughs> They're coming! Why didn't you tell me you were planning to set off a fucking bomb? I thought it was obvious enough that you would notice. Yeah, right. It's like, like it's so obvious. <laughs> Wow, you got away from those Nazis fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will never give the the police shit for losing for losing so fast in GTA ever <laughs> again. <laughs> now you just Oh, by the way, there was one other thing I forgot to mention. Uh remember when we were talking about how it cut to cutscene when we made that big jump? Oh yeah. One thing I like about GTA is that it basically gives you the option to do that, you know, with the action cam. I feel that's a oh, good way yeah. of doing that. That is a good way of doing that. So then it's like it depends on what the person likes. Where are you going? Later. First I'll have a word with Luke. Yeah, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna sprint over there. <laughs> I'm gonna sprint comically over there. <laughs> it never gets old. Fucking <laughs> There's no point. It will ever not look ridiculous. It will never not stop being funny. <laughs> it's just the sped up part of it. It's just so goofy. Like, how did that even come about? Were they just like in crunch time? That it's like the game's got to be out next week. Fuck it. I bet they didn't even have a sprint function until the last week. And they're like, how can we do that without doing any more animation? I know. Fast forward the animation. <laughs> is necessary. I already lost her brother. 
They gotta have their chest thumping. Once said that Jules was his own man. Well, I am my own woman. Do not presume to tell. Okay, I'm looking up the voice actors now. I want to know who these people are because she sounds very familiar to me. What if it was like a? What if it was like um? <laughs> Was, uh fuck what's her name how am i forgetting femships oh like, jennifer hale yeah what if it just turned out it was jennifer hale the whole time it is surprisingly jennifer hale more often than you'd think oh um, i know she uh she's um the she's sister lutes yeah she is wait oh yeah she is sister lutes she's also um i can't remember it was like a princess i think she was on adventure time or something like that and she was one of the little princesses Oh yeah, she was in that. I remember that. Yeah, she then she did a really cute voice. I'm like, gah, that's weird. I'm so used <laughs> to hearing the gruff Jennifer Hale. She needs to be in more leading role things. That's what I'm noticing. Yeah. Um, because she has that star quality about her. Yeah, she definitely. Um, I mean, you should play as Femship <laughs> yeah. in general, but uh, her her voice acting is is way better than oh yeah Shep's voice no acting. offense to the other guy the other guy the other guy seems really cool yeah he seems like a nice dude but his, um, <laughs> it's that kind of bland voice that has nothing. there's i've heard it said that he's better at doing the the like renegade lines and it, that's kind of true he's better at doing some of them well the thing is is like it's easy to be angry that's the thing Unless you're, like, one of those rare people who don't show anger well. Anger is one of the easiest emotions to fake. Yeah. Which, why else do you think Leonardo DiCaprio keeps telling people yeah, he's like, a good actor? Because all he does is just play roles where he's just screaming or doing, or just being Leonardo DiCaprio. Pretty much. You still like Leo? Um, yeah, he's fine. I, I don't mind him in movies. Okay. Oh, wait, what, oh, is, there... what, what oh, is going we... on with... Like... With that map, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that must be a Skylar. Uh, I thought it Skylar just. I thought it's like you failed the mission. You ran over that lamppost. <laughs> Karen no, Strassman. For... Okay, what else has she been? So she's been in a lot of anime. All right, let me see games. Oh, shit! She's uh, in the new Resident Evil. She was a major character in that. Yeah. In the new Resident Evil Two. Why did the engine stop? Yeah. Sounding? the fuck uh, <laughs> it turned the thing, into thing was just all coasting for a minute actually no. <laughs> yeah wow she's she's had a big career this lady but i every feel, voice actor always is in like tons of shit but i mean like prestigious like but i'm trying to remember like there's like something i can recognize I her from but whatever let me see who else I is in the here papers to get <gasps> wait yet. skylar st Clair is carrie walgren wait really yeah Huh. And you know who that is, right? Yeah. She's fucking, fucking awesome actor. She's in a lot of shit. She's in Fooly Cooly. What's that? Uh, FLCL. It's, a, it's an anime. It was like six episodes. Has, that was like her first role. Fuck. And it's... Oh, shit. Double fuck. Double fuck. Oh, just stop there. Wait. Uh, ah! If you don't have the papers, this is also an option. <laughs> Sir, you need to fill out your taxes. Bolt! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Fran Francisca is actually voiced by the same woman as Ver Veronique. Oh, that makes sense. I feel like they always pull double duty voice actors. Well, Nolan North is in here. He's oh, like well, Cochon. What game isn't he in? Yeah. I like Nolan North. I do too. I never understood why Yahtzee hated him so much. Maybe I, just overexposure. I suppose, but it's like he really hated him. For some, I think. Did it's he? Just, when did he ever mention him in reviews? He Is mentioned just... him like a lot whenever he was in that. It's like he's like Nolan North, and I'm sure he's a perfectly nice man. But every time I hear his voice, I want to peel my my eyes with a with a <laughs> peel my ears out with. A, I was like, what the fuck did Nolan North ever do to you? Yeah. The only thing you don't like is you just don't like Nathan Drake. But Which is quite understandable. It's a bit understandable, yeah. Nathan Drake. <laughs> I kind of like Nathan Drake, but I understand why everybody hates him. I uh, I liked Nathan Drake when I was like twelve, and I like him in, by, in the, by the second time one. I was like fourteen. I did not like Nathan Drake <laughs> anymore. I like him in the second and fourth one. I don't like him in the first and third one. Yeah, it literally depends on how good the story is, and then he molds to well, whether yeah, or not it's good or not. Yeah. 
I don't know. It does. I think even you guys point out that, I mean, at the end of the day, like, Nathan Drake isn't ever stopping, like, an evil person. Like, he's just in this for selfish goals. Yeah. That's more of, like, the story rather than him as a... I mean, that's character motivation and writing problem. Or yeah. Of, that's always been the problem with Naughty Dog, as we mentioned. Is they don't understand that you need to make your bad guys very simple if you want to enjoy an Indiana Jones-style adventure. <laughs> Imagine my delight when I learned I'd be nearby on business for a few days. I can't hear Carrie Walgren at all in that. That is, uh, That's how it always sort of goes for voice actors. Like, I, I didn't recognize Jennifer Hale as Lutez. Fair enough. But there's a lot of times when they'll, you know, rely on their power of voice. That's true. But Nolan North, too. Like, you recognize him when he's a lead, because he always does the handsome lead voice. But he's yeah. got a very big range of voices he can do. He does. He was in a, the new God of War, actually. I did not realize he was in it until later. It's time you considered a new line of work. Okay, I kind of hear in there. I mean, she's now also doing Starfire a lot outside of, uh, mm. outside of like, uh, Hinden Walsh. You know Hidden Walsh, right? Nope. Uh, she's Princess Bubblegum and Star and Starfire and the Teen Titans. Gotcha. Show. Dosed you with a mild paralytic. The hangover should be no worse than what you're accustomed well, to. Well, that British accent isn't terrible. Fuck you, arseways. <laughs> I just love his hat. Yeah, the, uh... I actually used to wear a hat like that. Did you ever find out who started the fire? We didn't start the fire. <laughs> Oh, by the way, one thing I really want us to do is remember when he's looking at the photo? <laughs> oh. I want it to be like, look at the photograph. <laughs> <laughs> to see the whole world fall under the shadow of the Third Reich. It's just sheepishly looking at his hands. <laughs> <laughs> These hands have killed so many Nazis, you wouldn't even believe it. That's slipping back in the Scottish accent for me. Give a Kurt Dierke to you. On a silver platter. Ooh, my boner just went up. <laughs> what is it you want done? <laughs> He's got a kind of G-Man vibe about him. Yeah, sure. yeah. Have you heard of that movie Serenity? The the Matthew McConaughey one. Not not the, oh, not the yeah, Firefly. Oh, yeah, that's the one where it's all in a video game, right? Yeah, and then... but what's funny is there's this guy running around who looks like G-Man with glasses on. And he's, and he's also the one who reveals it's a video game. And I hmm. was like... And at the first beginning, I was like, that kind of looks like the G-Man from Half-Life. Then he's like, it's all a video game. I was like, fuck, I knew it! <laughs> God, that movie. I fell out of my seat, like, laughing and just... I wanted to check that out for that reason. Oh. I also wanted to check out, um... Fucking that one about the kid that came out last year. Uh, oh, God, what was it? You know, the kid who's dead, and then he, like, leaves all the instructions to, like, his mom... Oh. ...for, like, doing the thing. Oh. <laughs> I know what you talk about. I don't know the name though. I remember there was this one called a uh, little boy. It was a Christian movie about how a kid mo gets powers to wish his dad to come back from the war <laughs> because it's the will of God. Fucking. Oh I have God. seen too many Christian. <laughs> I've I've forced my girlfriend and a good friend of mine to watch Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas, and they still haven't forgiven me. <laughs> have you? heard of that movie i have i believe you uh showed me the trailers and everything oh god it's, i remember do you nothing rem can prepare you do you remember uh or I, I once saw something that i think was was very telling about um the the state of christianity in america <laughs> and all those christian movies um just do you remember that movie son of god oh i think i do but i, I didn't was, see it but I, I know what you're talking about it was like re-edited like close from a history channel series about the bible into a movie <laughs> um but i just remember i was like walking around uh around the time that movie came out i was in my hometown and i was walking around the barnes and noble and um i As saw you do. uh yeah that, that was all that that's all that fucking is to do when we start for <laughs> connecticut is walk around the goddamn Same in barnes minnesota and noble. yeah um and so, yeah, and I just remember seeing uh, on one of the shelves, I saw the novelization of Son of God. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. I bet there's a novelization of God's Not Dead, too. <laughs> Probably. But, like, Son I of, Son of God was too. the Jesus story. There already was a book. <laughs> <laughs> Called Son of God. <laughs> Man. We should just call this mediocre Marvels episode shenanigans because shenanigans. That's, that's pretty. Much... That's what this game is all about. Yeah, 
it's all about causing some shit. I mean, we had we had our serious episode where we discussed it seriously. We now get the right yeah. to just I'm not just around. blowing up every bit of Nazi <laughs> Naziness I see. As you do. Yeah. <laughs> it it really makes me re- remember why I liked killing Nazis in the first place. Yeah. Look at them. Look at those Nazis go by. That's I will say, just... I don't think there's too much for us to say about it anymore. It's just, it's just, just fun. Just, just play it. Yeah. Just give it a shot. Watch it happen. Yeah. Uh, Actually, that's the thing. You can buy this for five bucks on good old games. So definitely give it a play. If yeah. What four people who are watching this uh, definitely play it because it's actually a lot of fun. <laughs> Did his hand just twist like <laughs> all the way behind? Maybe. <laughs> just constantly dynamiting everything. Oh shit. Oh fuck. <laughs> One of the things about the uh the uh gunplay as well with it being like there's a lot of high up structures is that when you get spotted, you get shot from every angle. conceivable angle. Yeah. That's definitely a far cry thing. Yeah, that was especially a problem in Far Cry 1. Oh, yeah, where you just kept getting killed. Well, the difference, though, I will say with car. this game that lets you get away with it a little easier is that you're in third person, so when you're being shot from everywhere, you can at least yeah. get your bearings a little better. You you can see sort of where they're coming yeah. from. That's actually one of the problems I'm having with Bulletstorm. Is, um, there's, well, it's not the problem of like everybody shooting you. That's not anything, but the problem is... They do, still have the gear style of controls where, you know, you hold A to uh, run. Yeah. But the problem with that is since it's a first person game, you don't really you're you can't really move the stick at the same time to look around. So you're just kind of like running. And at times you'll be looking at the floor and you start to run. Then you have to stop, run, adjust the stick, look up. Oh, that's, and then keep oh, running. that's always right. You even sort of need to do that in Gears at some times. Yeah. You? And no. I know you could probably fix it if you played it on a keyboard but i was like I, you know what i'm gonna play this on a i know this was made mainly for consoles first so but it, it does work once you get used to it but it's so jarring yeah which is why you have to remember why it works in gears because you know you have a third person camera so you can see around a lot more so you don't need to adjust that yeah much. man i haven't played gears in so long neither have i it um i think the last time i played any gears games like all the way through is i played i went on like a amphetamine bender with a friend and we 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 played through almost all of gears one in like a weekend <laughs> and it was it was a good it was a fun experience I it can was imagine. a whole it was a bonding experience it was a good time <laughs> whoa i'm seeing a lot of red dots very on the map romantic over here. whoa what's this what is is this a base Ooh, look oh at my that. god Ooh, can now we this fire is... that I've got a feeling we can't fire that, but I wonder we if we definitely can definitely blow it up. I wonder if we can get that little gun and point it at the big gun. Let's do it. Oh, <laughs> well, now oh, we have no shit. choice. We have no choice. All right, we're going in. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> I Jesus really Christ, like this game. It... <laughs> I'm getting fucked from every angle. This was ill-advised. <laughs> I will say, uh. It may be harder for me to enjoy this as much now just because I'm an adult, so I can't spend as many hours <laughs> on it. But I can tell if I had this as a as a teenager, I would have sunk so many weekend hours into it. Yep. It's de- it's it's definitely a game that's also um like it's a really good like no commitment game. Like it's a game that you can just sort of pick up and dick around in for a while. Yeah. I feel like a good comfort food is also something you're supposed to be able to pick up at any time, play it, even if you're not in the perfect mood. Just play it for like two hours. And these games, I feel, suit it better when you just are given a world to play in. But there's definitely, it's more than just, like, the Skinner Box type shit we have yeah. now with these open world games where we're hitting exhaustion. Oh, we got 60 contraband for blowing that whole thing up? Jesus. Oh, Maybe you have to blow up the whole base because there's Maybe. another thing on your right I see on the map. Is yeah, that there's a tank, a, actually? There's a tank. There's a big, um... You should just get in the tank and then... Oh, you can't get in the tanks. Oh. Well, maybe there's like one tank that you can drive later in the game, but most of them you can't. Oh, damn Probably it. getting the cover. About to get killed, yeah. Damn it. Damn. Uh, Is that a good place we, to end yeah, it? Yeah, I figure let's end it there. End it on failure. Sean has died. Sean has died. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night.